Well, this is a very pleasant place. Single family homes, nicely kept lawns, nice landscaping. You can see the grass comes right down to the edge of the curb. But here's something different. We've got flowers coming right down and over the curb. Big row of marigolds. Collards, big leafy green in the background. Cleome and zinnias and tomatoes growing in cages. Well, this has got to be the garden of finalist number five, Leora Stutz. I caught up with Leora out of the compost pile. Let's meet her. So Leora, this is your secret, we secret weapon. Yeah, I think it uh, is. I think compost is really the thing that makes gardens grow especially good. I certainly agree with you. I love to see a compost pile. You're in the process now of uh, screening some out to put in the garden? Yeah, I always like to take the stones out, and in case there's any pieces that aren't completely finished, then I throw them back in the compost to finish up. Yeah, you got a lot of nice worms working in there, too. They do a great job, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they do. I got a lot of manure in this yeah. particular batch right here, so the worms like that. They're not, sure. Some of them are not very big. They must have just hatched out. Yeah. And, and, and I sift it through here, and it also makes it really nice when you put it where you're going to grow something. Sure. Now, uh, do you try to put this over your whole garden or just where you're planting? Oh, no. I don't have enough to put over my yeah. whole garden. <laughs> I just have to ration it out. Yeah. Well, that's a neat little process, but I'd like to see the results. Okay. Let's go look because at it. Because when you put stuff like that in, in a garden as good as that, as rich as that, you've got to have some great growth. Well, come on over here and let me show you the real main part of my garden. Boy, that is some garden. Everything looks so rich and green, and you've got so many vegetables growing, lots of flowers. It's Very really pretty. gorgeous, isn't it? Let's begin over here by looking at the rhubarb, because an awful lot of people can't grow rhubarb. Not that they, they can't grow it, they don't have the space to, uh, you know, well, use it Well, it does take up quite crop. a bit of space. That's right, and you've got to allocate that space year after year. Yeah. Same with asparagus, which right. you've got uh, growing nicely here. These must be relatively young plants. I just planted them this year. It uh, got so expensive in the market, I decided I'd give a part of my garden to it's them. It's a great crop. My guess is you're going to have to wait two or three years before you get a meaningful harvest, because well, they should be about the size of your thumb when the sprouts come up in order to harvest them. Now, potatoes. This is, yeah, I got my potatoes on top of the ground, and then I put straw around them. Okay, we've and done I, that. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's a potato. They're not very big. They're not very big. They've got a little ways to go yet. I planted them late, so. Yeah. Okay. But you can be, eat them this way. That'll be tender as can be. Yeah. I won't put that under because you probably want to have that for, for dinner tonight. Cook it, right. Uh, I have two kinds of potatoes here, red and white both. I see. Why would you have a tree, a red bud tree, growing in a, in a vegetable garden? Well, it's a pretty dumb thing to do. <laughs> I didn't plant it there. It came up by itself, and I didn't want to try to move it because they don't move very well, so I left it because I love red bud trees. It's really a pretty tree, too. No question about it. You're growing lots of strawberries. Yes, this is last year's uh, plants, and yeah. then these right this here, are, and then this end and that one there are all started this year. I see. What about this this uh, bed here? Yeah, that one I mean, too. This, this is a this year's plant. This planting. year's. These two right here are this okay. year's plants. Now, I like the way you've got the raised bed. Are you doing it for because your soil is too wet? Uh, no, I mainly I did it because I I heard about raised beds yeah. and that it was nice uh, for them to grow down the sides and it was easy for picking and that's true. That's really the reason I did it. Very true. Let's take a peek at your Brussels My garden is not here. too wet. It isn't. No. No. Okay. I think the raised beds are great. Okay. Now, look I at have, the way they're coming. They're getting pretty big at yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Actually, they're big enough you could pick some off. Yeah. But I broke off the top last week so that they would. Uh, enlarge up to the top sure. because they won't grow that much. The, the top ones wouldn't mature yeah. if they make any more now anyway. It's you know, they, you've got frost. a lot of Brussels sprouts growing. I imagine you like them. Yeah, I really love them. <laughs> <laughs> and of course they get better after they've been nipped by the frost too. Yes, and they don't have any bugs on them. Yeah, great which little I crop. like. No, nice cabbage before we leave. Oh, look it, I want to show you down here there's some cabbage sprouts in there already. Yeah, now when there's you cut the big head You'll leave the little sprout, won't you? Yeah, I leave the root right in the ground and leave the sprouts, and they'll get bigger, and we'll have them for stew or something. Sure, you get, a, you get yeah. a second harvest yeah. because you wouldn't be putting out anything else in this late in the season anyway. They're nice and tasty yeah. after frost, too. Got a few beets growing here? Oh, yeah, let me show you. These are, uh, there, I had three kinds of beets, red, yellow, and white. Yeah. And this white beet, uh, when we cooked them all together, we found that they're really sweet. Like, and I figure they must be related to sugar beets because they're must white, be. too. Must be. We used to have a sugar beet factory in Lansing. We've grown the red and the yellow, but we haven't grown the white ones. Uh -huh. uh, that, that's interesting. 
No, parsnips, those are great. Oh, oh you the will. first year I had mm. parsnips, they were the little tops like yeah. this, and yeah. I didn't get very good germination, and the bottoms were nothing. And look at these, I'm so thrilled. Oh, they'll be great. Now. I mixed manure and sand yeah. and uh, rototilled it and then threw it up in, to make this raised bed yeah. so that the parsnips would have plenty of room to grow down because this path is right at the subsoil sure, level. Sure, All right, will you harvest these this fall or next spring? Well, I understand you're supposed to let them go over the winter and then pick them in the spring. I think you'll find that your, your flavor will be much improved. Salsify. Not too many people grow that. Would you dare to pull one of those? A lot of people don't even know what it That's is. That's right. But when, when I was a little girl, my mother used to, I think they probably raised it in their garden. And yeah. Oh, look, it's got a double bottom. Double root, Must yeah. have hit two some seeds stones, huh? Yeah, could be, yeah. Either that or two seeds growing. They're a funny uh, kind of a root. Those. And the way she did was she just uh, sliced it and cooked it yeah. and uh, put it in with milk. And they called it vegetable oyster. Sure. Yeah, like an oyster stew. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't really taste like oyster, though. No, I know. But... Uh, over here I've got some uh, cranberry beans. They're about ready to pick, and it's a shell bean. Pretty bean, isn't it? Yeah, you can use it mixed with other kinds of beans, like lima beans, and even green beans cut up and bound in a piece and mix them all together and cook them. I guess we do. And then grape them. I don't know. Yeah, but it, boy, that... My friend yeah. gave me the seeds, so I didn't even read about it in the seed catalog. Yeah. Well, they grow these an awful lot in Europe. And, and you'll go ahead and mix these with others? And cook. That's really yeah. Yeah. Or you can just cook them by themselves like you do lima beans and sure. eat them with butter. They're really good that way, hey, too. Hey, that's nice. Or you could cream them. Yeah, yeah. but you don't eat the pot. You no, just eat I the, don't eat the, the pot. The bean itself. Well, it started out to be a raised bed, but yeah. I got the idea this year that it might make a good cold frame because a friend of mine just heaped up some dirt and put a storm window over it and had a lot better results with the uh, plants she started than I did, the ones I raised in the house under lights and tried to do everything right. Sure, because they had so, a chance to harden off a little bit yeah. and become strong and sturdy. That and uh, she put a candle under it at night if it was going to be sure. frost level, you know. And now you're using and, it to grow onions right. and carrots. And I think this fall I'll plant some, pretty soon now, I'll plant some butter crunch lettuce in there as soon as I pull the on onions out. Well, I yeah. could do it in between. Okay, I think that's actually. great because you get the use of it in the spring and then you get a double use by using it yeah. in the fall, too. I raised lettuce last fall and I got real nice lettuce that lasted for a long time. I got one of those plastic things to put over. Now I can just put the storm windows over. I think that's great. Would you dare to pull one of those carrots and take a look? Yeah, these are uh, Danvers half long. Danvers half long, okay. And uh, I like the way you're growing these in such an intense bed. You've got no weed problems and you must be growing two or three hundred carrots in a very small space. You reached down for one and you pulled up three. Yeah, I pulled up that's a little bit. That's pretty intensive. I can't even get them out. <laughs> oh, that's those are nice. Well, carrots. I have another yeah. bed of carrots over here too. I have several yeah. different varieties, and they're all nice and big. And all right, and you just use these as you need them. Yes, you pull them right in, now pull them I am. I'm planning okay. to cover them with straw or something and okay. leave them in the garden. Let's leave them right along there and and move out, because I see some New Zealand spinach over here, and I like to see that in a garden. I don't think enough people grow it. Well, it doesn't go to seed in the summer. That's no, why I perfect. raise it. Yeah. And if I get enough of it in my freezer, when we have church dinners, I have a real nice casserole with yeah. a lot of eggs and cheese in it. It's delicious. Do you just pick the tips like that, or do you take a longer stem? In the spring, I just come out and pick off the, just the leaves. The leaves. Okay. But when it gets this time of year and the garden's getting over, and I want to hurry up and get some more in the freezer, sure. um, I just might come and take you know, oh, a whole boy. thing like this and take yeah. it in the sink and then pinch them off and wash them. I see. But you'd throw away some of the bigger, older ones. Oh, yeah. You'd yeah. throw away all the ones that don't look nice. Yeah. And the little bitty ones, I don't bother. You know, these little tiny ones sure. at the tip, I might not keep them. Let's go over in here because I'm, I'm interested in the way your soil looks. Uh, you, your soil is obviously very rich, and I know you use an awful lot of compost. But what I love to do is reach into a bed and be able to feel that really nice, crumbly soil. <laughs> now... I know you use a lot of compost, but what else have you done to make this soil so nice? Well, nobody would ever be crazy enough to do what I did this year. I had this whole area was full of nut sedge, and I yeah. tried to dig it out last year, and I, it little, all came back this year again. That's a little weed with a little bulbous thing. looks like a blade of grass. looks kind of like grass, yeah. but it's yellower and taller yeah. and shinier. Yeah. And if you pull it without digging and getting the nut that's sometimes yeah. way down in the ground, it just sends up a new top, and you've got the same weed all over again. <laughs> So, so this year I took eighth inch mesh and I made a frame that fits over my cart that I have up there yeah. that I was sifting in. 
and I parked it out here in the garden and, and I came out by the hour and I shoveled on there and rubbed it through and threw away all those nut sets. Oh, Some boy. couple times I counted how many yeah. nuts I'd sift out in one, probably about uh, four shovels full yeah. and I'd get about uh, maybe 17. Oh, which boy. doesn't sound yeah. like a lot, but when you figure out how many shovels full I have here. You've put a lot of work a lot. in. <laughs> uh, how many hours do you think you put into this garden uh, in the course of a week in order to keep it looking as nice as you have it? Well, I spend more time sometimes than others, yeah. but I would say I probably spend about three good long days in the garden a week. I don't doubt that for yeah. a minute. Look, these look like giant peppers to me, are they? Oh, no, no, these are pimentos. Oh, okay. And I like to have a little bit of pimentos ah. in my in my freezer yeah. to use in things instead of buying those little jars and having to throw away half of oh, it because sure. you don't want to use very much. Very nice. I'm going to leave that right down there. We'll pick it up later. And see, I have onions planted yeah. all around there. You're not wasting any space in yeah. collards. And these are okay, collards. Now, tell me how you deal with the collards. Well, I just put them in the ground let them grow. I mean, how do you cook them? Oh, I don't even cook them myself. I tried last year because somebody bragged them up so much, and I didn't really like them. Maybe <laughs> I didn't give them a fair try, but so I have some away. friends that like them, so I grow them That's for them. That's all right. Just in passing, I know that your corn has gone by, but I'm interested in the variety because it must be over eight feet tall. It's a tall growing corn. It's mainliner EH. Okay. Uh, EH stands for Everlasting Heritage. That's right. It's got the sweet gene. Both, both. Yeah. Uh, sides of the gene yeah. are sweet corn. Did you like it? Oh yeah. yeah, this is my third or fourth year to grow that kind. Okay, beans, lima beans, right? Yeah. Got some on there. Yeah, not fully ready yet, no, but boy, yet. they're coming. It takes a long time yeah. for lima beans, and you can't plant them till the soil's warm, so you have to hope that you get a late frost and a lot of warm fall weather to sure. make big beans. Do you realize that we've gone through this whole garden for several minutes, and you haven't fed me anything yet? Yeah, and I'm well. looking at a beautiful melon. <laughs> look at that one. And I wonder if we could take a look at it. Should be and a maybe, good one. You know, really maybe end up with a little bit of a wedge. You know the variety on that? No, I bought this at the market and they didn't have the variety marked. So I don't mm. know what it is. But next year I'm not going to do that. I'm going to plant my own seeds because I like mm. the ones I grew before better than I do these. Mm. This is absolutely perfect, isn't it? I guess I can't complain too much. This is good. Mm. Just leave that right there. We'll come back and finish the warm. whole thing <laughs> it's warm a little from the bit sun. later. Okay, now, uh oh, we got a little uh, little helper in the garden, right? Well, I didn't think it was much of a helper. Not much of a helper. <laughs> oh boy. We've got four, yeah. four raccoons, two possums, two cats. Now this is a possum. Yeah, this is yeah. a possum. He's a not blue very jay. happy. We there. caught a blue jay and a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you going to do? Take him into the I'll woods? I'll take and let him, him go? out where he won't do any gardens yeah. any harm and let yeah. him go. Well, he or she, as the case may be. They deserve to live. I love the way your tomatoes look. They've got lots of rich foliage. And how many varieties are you growing in? Oh, I must have seven different varieties. Uh, any particular favorites? Well, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that I like Big Boy and uh, Better Boy. I see. Yeah, they, they're they're good smooth, are. nice and smooth tomato. They don't have uh, the flaws in that some of the yeah. rest of them have. Your, your foliage is just great. They're very healthy, uh, strong growing, lots of vines, lots of yield. Look at the yield that you've got up here at this end. You probably didn't even notice that. No, that, I that's wasn't. That's a magnificent hand of tomatoes. When I go around, I really look for the yeah. red ones and I now, don't which, think about it. How which many variety is this? Could you tell? Uh, this one's Big Boy. Big Boy. Uh -huh. Very, very nice. Okay, you got to tell me why you're growing a band of, of grass between the rows. Well, partly because it looks nice, yeah. but I'm growing it for a green manure crop. Okay, this is just rye, just winter it's rye. It's annual, annual rye. rye. It's not winter rye. I have yeah. grown winter rye, I have grown wheat, and uh, I have grown rye grass. And I just put this in because I wanted to cut it and make the paths yeah. look nice. It does look And then I can rototill it in and make you a, get green a green manure. manure. Right. And am I correct that another year you'd plant where the, where the grass is now? That's my idea was. Yeah. So, of course, I got these uh, strawberries. Uh, everlasting strawberries yeah. in there, ever bearing, and so I won't plant in that spot anyway. Well, you've Come out here. I'd like to show you my uh, people trap. You saw my animal trap back That's there. That's right. This is my people trap up here. And how I, do you use it as a people trap? Well, I planted these collards because I wanted to have something of the vegetable yeah. garden up here. Yeah. And collards are so beautiful when they grow, I couldn't yeah, believe sure it. And so then I decided to put flowers either side because I have so many people that walk by here for their walks or they in jog the by here sure. in the evening. And uh, 
so I, I put all these flowers out here and they slow down. And when they slow down, I say, come out in and see my garden. <laughs> Just like you did to me, only I came right. in from the compost pile. Right. Leora, you have a beautiful <laughs> garden. I appreciate you taking the time to show it to us. I wish you the best of luck. And maybe we'll see you in Boston. Thank you. It's my pleasure.